a lot of the photography that we do is very slow paced and reflective and not batching around. But if you want something a bit more high octane activity, that albeit there's a bit of waiting for this, but like if you like your bird of prey fast action photography, then this is the place. There's about 12 different species of bird of prey. Um, this is in um place I'm talking about is um in Spain, two places I go to. So this is um the town of Montsonis in the Pyrenees, um, a couple of hours away from uh, Barcelona. Um, and we get golden eagles, Benelli eagles, um, lammergeiers, um, black and griffin vultures, goshawks, marsh harriers, buzzards, lesser kestrels, common kestrels, eagle owls, and it goes on and on. Um, and often a lot of these are right above the place where we stay. Um, so this is a sense of the, uh, again, taking my drone with me wherever I go. Um, sense of the incredible landscape you get there. So this is, um, yeah, where the red pin is, a uh, town called Montsonis. Um, so it's a couple of hours or so driving from Barcelona. And we stay in a little uh, medieval fortress town. It's more like a hamlet um, called Montsonis. I think there's maybe 20 or so residents in this place. And that's the old castle. And then we stay in a little kind of annex coming off the castle with a few apartments and then that incredible view looking out. Um, and literally just five minutes above the town, you get Benelli's Eagle um, and the Eagle Owls. So yeah, the Eagle Owls nest up in these pits and every evening we hear them um, hooting. And this is um, yeah, one of the hides that we use for watching Benelli's Eagles. The Benelli's Eagles are um, incredibly shy um, and one of the rarest birds of prey, um, I think certainly in Spain. Um, and yeah, you need to kind of sit and hide and wait for them to come. And often we'll, um, we'll put some kind of bait out there from one of the local hunters or butchers. Um, and then sure enough, after a little while, um, these pairs come in. Um, and yeah, it's formidable birds that usually you see them as a speck in the sky, but to see them that close, like barely meets the way, it's incredible. And then uh, just a record shot of one of the eagle owls, um, the largest of the European owls. Um, so um, it, it's with these heights. I mean, again, the, the, um, the um, opportunities for doing like GoPro or iPhone photography is incredible. So um, and just getting so close to all sorts of rare species. So um, quite often I'll dip my long lens and just put. Um, a little GoPro, um, or even, I mean, I've used an iPad just hooked up and take photos of, um, Lishlau here or Goshawk, um, or, you know, Blue Rock Trash here. And there is this fantastic, you get these amazing vantage points, um, which is what I like about these hides. Some hides, you get quite a bland background or you don't really have much choice and you're kind of looking at the same view for six hours. But with these hides, we try to get ones where there's kind of interesting, you know, if not 360 degree view, you know, close enough where you get a wonderful sweeping vista, you can see the animals, the birds coming in. And then if you want to try wide angle shots or, you know, get different um, conditions, then it allows that. Um, of course, also drinking reflection pools, something which is a bit more of a photography thing, are these reflection pools. And um, this is all one shot. Um, you've got goshawks and marsh areas and buzzards flying in. Um, So buzzards here, goshawks, which when they fly in, they scare up. Um, we don't bait this hide actually, so that I think is just a rabbit that calls itself. But um, when the goshawks fly in, they just scare up everything. Um, quite formidable. It's marsh harrow there. Then my um, one of my favorite hides that we go to in Montsonese is the um, lammergeier and vulture carrying hide. We've got the um, younger birds, juveniles in the foreground, griffin vulture in the middle, and the formidable um, male lammergeier or bearded vulture. Two of them. Have their, there's probably about a dozen, maybe 15 lammergeiers at this one spot. And they're also known um, colloquially as bone crushers because of their, um, they don't go for the flesh, they go for bones and they fly to great heights and drop the bones down in the cliff, get to the calcium deposits.
And these are here year round, actually. So a lot of these birds of prey, although I specifically go uh, in March, so I'm going back in um, three weeks' time. Um, these are generally here year round. And the griffin box as well. And again, this hide offers 360 degree views of all the mountains here. Get these amazing kind of kettles of um, griffin vultures and black vultures and lemon guys scoring all the animals and coming, coming out of the fog. The other site I go to in Spain, often I do it back to back with both of these trips back to back. This is a place just outside Madrid um, called uh, Soto Vinuelas. And it's five minute drive outside of the city of Madrid. Um, really, really amazing location to see. Um, Spain's only endemic um, bird of prey, the Spanish Imperial Eagle. Um, historically, you would have had to go somewhere like Andalusia, Cota de Doniana, to see Spanish Imperial Eagle, and you might get lucky and see one or two. Last year, when I went there, we had, um, in the short of two hours, we had 15 Spanish Imperial Eagles just flying around. And this is literally five minutes outside of the city, that you can see there. Um, and it's a private estate, about 8,000 hectares. It's a former hunting estate. Um, and we've now, um, I'm the only person outside of Spain who's now got permission to bring people to this um, estate to see these birds um, and also some of its vultures um, and golden eagles as well. And then you get a lot of um, um, Iberian kind of Mediterranean species um, that, again, typically you would think you'll need to go more into the depths, into the heart of Spain or down to uh, in the south to see them. So this is an Iberian um, azure winged magpie, which are very, very common um, just outside Madrid. Um, it's a kind of quite unique, going back a few times, it's a very unique um, home oak habitat, which is more... Um, um, it's something that you'll be more likely to find if you go further west towards Portugal. So it's a very unique habitat for Spain, which is probably why you get such congregations of these eagles, as well as fallow deer, um, genets, cats as well. Um, I think even lynx have started to wander in. Now, this is a Iberian green woodpecker. And then <laughs> there's lots of forest hides, so quite typical species of the forest includes Things like crested tits, um, rock sparrows with its very um, nice little dash of yellow, and uh, serens. And also very common, uh, the Sardinian warblers. The two very um, different but kind of complementary locations, um, where again, we just take our time. Um, and fantastic birds, and obviously in spring you get yeah, you know, not just those birds, but all the kind of things like great spotted cuckoos and beaters and roses. So, um, as I said, I'm going to be running more trips in March and then also through April. Um, I think I'm probably close to time. Absolutely stunning yeah, photos. Off, actually. Oh, photos. That's absolutely wonderful. And I already knew I wanted to go back to Lake Kirkini. I now want to go everywhere else in <laughs> as well. 